What's this? An A and Q or something? Wait, um, yes, it's an answers and questions. Or is that questions and answers session? I don't know. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today I thought I would do a the very first Q&A ever on this video, uh, on this channel rather. And um, basically I just asked people here on the YouTube community tab and also on Twitter if they wanna ask me any questions. So I have about 10 questions here that I'm going to provide the answers. Now, as always, if you enjoy this, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. One second, before we begin, the sponsor of this video is Scrimba. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, Scrimba.com is an interactive learning platform for coders. They recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. What is the most annoying thing you get asked as a designer? Now, when I first read this question, I was kind of at a loss because I can't really think of one thing that really annoys me, which is a great thing. But after thinking about it for a couple minutes, I realized I think one of the things that I've I've had people ask me, you know, multiple times throughout the years is, Gary, why do you have to bother designing in Figma or Adobe XD or Sketch? Why can't you just start off into the HTML, CSS process? So I've talked about this many times before in the channel, but for those of you who may not be aware of why you do that, the reason you do that is because it makes your life a lot easier to be able to visualize exactly what the UI is going to look like. It allows you to quickly iterate or make changes to the UI design uh, based on how it changes you know, throughout the product life cycle. Um, and also it makes it a lot easier in contrast than trying to make changes to a layout with HTML and CSS. So iterating over a design app like Adobe XD or Figma, it's just a matter of changing colors and things. You're not working with code. So it makes it so much easier also to create a design that looks and, and behaves very well, uh, as opposed to just going in blindly and trying to code out a really good looking design. So that's why you always should either yourself or a UI UX designer provide a mock-up uh, in that way you have a good idea of or perhaps an exact idea if it's a high fidelity prototype uh, of what needs to be coded on the front end. Next up, when and how did you realize your interest towards UI UX? Well, this happened a long time before UX was ever an actual term, like long, long time ago. And I would have to say that that was probably in the late 90s uh, to the early 2000s. So I started off designing websites and I also, even back then, I used Photoshop, which was the only tool available really, or with exception to a few others, uh, for actually creating a design first before hopping into code. Um, back then we used something like front page 98, front page 97 to do the actual code. And then a little bit later on, we used Dreamweaver as well. Um, and so I realized I, I really found uh, interest in designing these websites um, because I've always been a person who's been, you know, uh, interested in graphic design and drawing as a child. And being that I love computers, com combining those two fields, I, it was just a seamless transition. It did, never felt like work to me. It was exciting to me. And so that's how you kind of know that uh, UI UX um, is going to be something that you enjoy doing or uh, something that would be profitable long term as a good career if you enjoy it. Now, of course, that goes for anything, not just UI UX. Next up, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel even after a busy job? And then somebody said money. Well, I guess money always plays a part in your career choices for the most part. Um, for me, I wouldn't even say I had a really busy job what i was doing before youtube and before i got serious in youtube which was back in 2014 i was creating courses on front-end development graphic design and ui ux design and i was creating these courses for other networks uh, at first it was in Vado networks tuts plus.com um, and then it was digital tutors.com who then got bought out by pluralsight and so near the end near 2014 i, I was still working with pluralsight 
and I was creating about a course per month and they were paying me accordingly so. Uh, but what, re what really inspired me to start this YouTube channel or really take it seriously, because remember my first video upload was back in 2010 and I had about eight videos up until 2014. What inspired me to start taking it seriously was me wanting to be able to kind of go on my own and not have to rely on creating all of these courses and all of my money tied to having to, to do a pretty quick course turnaround period of every 30 days. And so after close to 60, 70, 80 courses, I was like, I have to do something. I have to build my own brand. So that's why I really started taking YouTube seriously. Um, and that way, you know, eventually it did lead me not having to record those courses anymore. Next up, how much do you lift on bench press? Um, right now, if I had to do a one rep max, it might be around 275. At my best, I did 355. And if I can, I'll find the video where I did 350, I think. I think I have a video of the 350. And that was even with bad form. Um, so I think I could do better uh, going on now that I know how to properly bench press uh, for power lifting and having a good back arch and all of that stuff. How to know if I am doing good in UI UX and if I should continue to choose some other path because it's hard to understand sometimes if I'm going in the right direction with UI UX. Well, I would say two factors will determine whether or not you should continue on the path, maybe three. The first one is, are you happy doing it? Now, of course, in any profession, there's gonna be times where it's difficult. I'm not talking about that. That's always gonna be, you know, even with relationships, like you know, marriages or whatever, it's not always 100% going to be exciting. But for the most part, it should be an enjoyable experience. So that's the first one. Second one, feedback from your peers. All right, uh, in relation to UI UX, you have a lot of different avenues for receiving feedback. You have my Discord server, you have uh, the various sites like behance.net and dribble.com where you can receive feedback. Uh, you have Facebook groups of designers where you can post and get feedback. And if you're trying really hard and after you know at least a year, you're still getting really bad feedback, maybe UI UX isn't for you based on just everybody saying this is horrible. Um, of course, it will be horrible at the beginning, but don't let that discourage you too much uh, because you're just a beginner anyways. And then I would say third, are your clients happy? So if you're working with clients and you're to the point where you know, you're actually uh, creating projects and you're getting paid for them, are you satisfying the needs of the client? And really, if you are, go ahead with it along with if you enjoy it as well. So if it's something you hate, I would I would not waste my time on it uh, because you have so many other options in this life in terms of employment and especially even just on the internet and computers. If you're not into UI UX, perhaps you're gonna be, a, you excel more at front end development and code. So you don't have to lock yourself into one thing. Um, so let's check out the next question. Where to learn UI UX for free? Like no cost at all hmm i wonder oh maybe my channel uh no for ser seriously my channel of course there's other ui ux youtubers out there um there are uh, other websites that you can learn ui ux fundamentals there's a lot of uh, written based tutorials that you can find uh so i would definitely probably veer towards the way of of youtube uh, because you know you get the video as well as the explanation um, and then that's probably going to be a great way to learn UI UX for free at least. What is your first design? I'm going to go ahead and just slap that up here and that's going to be one of my first designs and there's a portfolio when I was like 16. I think I was designing maybe when I was 14 or 15 maybe a couple times but this is the earliest that I could find and it is really really bad so i'm 37 now and this is back when i was 16. so this is ancient stuff what are the best majors to pursue in college to do ui ux i know computer science is the obvious choice but what else would make sense in the, in the industry and what did you major in well i didn't major in anything because i didn't go to college so really this is a question that i can't answer now, I will say this, 
I've told people time and time again, when it comes to college and it comes to coding, like front end development, even some programming uh, the outside of that, uh, and even UI UX, you don't have to go to college. Why? Well, a few reasons. Well, the, the primary reason you don't have to go to college is because all of this stuff is available on the internet. There are so many different avenues that are free and paid. And if we're talking about paid avenues, they're generally 95% cheaper than going the college route. Uh, that's the primary reason. This is all stuff that you can access yourself if you're an autodidact, which is just a fancy term for a self learner. All right. Um, if you have the drive, you can learn on the internet without having to get a degree. Now, I will also say not all colleges are made equal. Uh, in fact, when it comes to technology, you're, if you're going for a four year degree in computer science, the vast majority of what you're learning will probably have nothing to do or very little to do with what you're actually going to be doing as a UI UX designer. So that's a big factor to play. So not only are you spending a ton of money or your parents money on this degree, but you're also spending a tremendous amount of time that you're focusing on areas that you probably don't even need. Um, and so I had friends that went to college and when they came out of college, they were asking me questions because they were focused on their college work and the college work was very rarely focused on what they actually needed to do or wanted to do as a programmer, a web developer, et cetera. So if I have two daughters. If they ever show interest, they're only 10 and eight right now. If they ever show interest in doing computers, I'm going to tell them you don't need to go to college. All of this stuff is available to learn on your own, at your own pace, and for a massive fraction of the cost. Next up. What is the best way to market yourself as a creative in general? So I wouldn't say there is a best way, but I will say there are several things that you should do if you're a creative person, whether in your UI UX design, graphic design, identity design, etc. And so first of all, you have to have a website and make sure it's an actual website and not like a subdomain off of like whatever.wix.com. You want to use, you know, your name.com, your business name.com, .net, .org. I mean, it doesn't even matter. .design. Um, you can use anything as long as it's your own domain. And in that that site, it should be your portfolio, your work that you've produced. That's like one of the most important things that clients or potential employers want to see. It is your work. Um, and then also have a very easy way, have multiple ways for people to contact you on that website. Outside of having just a website, I would also say learn SEO if you can, search engine optimization. Uh, if you can learn how to keyword target even local based searches, if you wanna be like a local based web design company, um, you can learn how to do that and you can rank and you can start generating uh, a lot of exposure and clients if you know SEO. And then SEO is a big topic, it's not just for local. Uh, I was a logo designer for about five to seven years or so and I ranked high for terms like how to make a logo, how to design a logo. And it got me well, like 2000 clients. So that's a really great way to market yourself if you can learn how to rank in Google. Um, outside of that, I also having your, per, your portfolio and I, on the external designer networks like Dribbble and Behance, that can never hurt. Um, if you're gonna do that, put in the legwork to really uh, build up a following there. That means commenting on other people's work and other designers and following other designers. Follow them on Twitter. Try to interact with them. Uh, you can start to really build yourself some credibility as long as your work is good. So I would say those are the main ways that I would tackle if I were starting fresh as a creative in general. What is a good path to take to go from developer to designer? All right, so that's, that's sort of like asking, what is the best path to take from going from um, a football player to a dentist. <laughs> they're like, they're really quite different. Um, when you're a developer, you're dealing in code in some form of language or whatever. You could be HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, it could be Python. It could be built back end language. It could be a lot of things. Um, and it really doesn't have anything to do with actual visual aesthetics and design. 
So when I when you ask what is a good path to go from developer to designer, I don't have a great answer for you. It's just that they're so vastly different that you're gonna practically have to start over. You're not really gonna be able to take very much going from a developer to a designer, if that makes sense. Next up. Oh, that is the very last one. All right, so this is already a 14, 15 minute video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you like these Q and A's, let me know and I will produce more. Um, as a side note, I got scammed out of $10,000 for my bank account yesterday. And so there is that and I may not get it back. So that's what I'm going to be dealing with today. Very exciting. I'm actually going to do a video on it because I, it's incredible how I was able to get scammed like this. Anyhow, I'll talk to you all later and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.